I could easily make a one hour long deep dive into anti-magic field and I still wouldn't exhaust all the potential weirdness it tends to produce. It can be the ambiguous specific beats general rule, sometimes you simply cannot be sure what is specific and what is general. It could be the contradictory or contrary edge cases or simply rare circumstances between different game elements interacting with it. Whatever the case there is, anti-magic field remains one of the more painful spells for dungeon masters to make rulings and decisions for. Intuitively it is easy and straightforward to understand, all magic simply stops working inside of it as the name suggests, however, when it boils down to specifics that do matter, anti-magic field often creates confusion, sometimes even frustration. Most D&D players don't really need to care about it due to very high character level requirements, unless your DM really likes, you know, sending beholders after your asses. If you're among the minority that do play tier 3 and tier 4 characters on a more regular basis, or you're one of those lurking DMs watching my channel trying to keep up with the power of their players characters or maybe just planning to ruin their day then I guess this video is for you but before we unravel some of the mysteries of high level magic be sure to position your anti-magic field against the YouTube algorithm and prevent its harmful spells from stopping the magic of this channel thank you very much appreciate it essentially anti-magic field is a level 8 spell that produces a 10 foot radius aura a bubble formed around the caster of the spell that suppresses is all magic. Only artifacts and deities are not affected. This means that all other magic items, all spells, except anti-magic field itself obviously, and every other imaginable and unimaginable form and type of magic are affected. In other words, everything inside of this bubble is protected from harmful magic but it is also cut out from beneficial magic. For example, while inside of it it's impossible to take damage from a fireball but it is also impossible to get healed by mass cure wounds. Unless of course the magic is originating from artifacts and deities as the spell clearly says. It is important to understand the basic distinction and interaction between counter spell and dispel magic versus anti-magic field. These spells are kinda similar but they are definitely not the same. The two popular negation spells have a chance to stop all other spells completely dead in their tracks. They have a chance but there is no guarantee. Counter spell can even also interrupt the casting of anti-magic field itself just like any other spell. However, However, once it has been cast, nothing other than breaking the caster's concentration can stop anti-magic field from running its course and demoting all spellcasters into supremely inferior, generic, stabby, shooty, smashy or slashy boys. Sage Advice Compendium goes even further and provides a list of questions to ask yourself every time you're dealing with game elements and their magical or non-magical nature. But despite all this apparent clarity and clarifications, here are a couple of examples where it still gets tricky and resolution is not immediately obvious. I won't be providing my own rulings for these situations, instead I want you to post your own solutions to these problems and conundrums in the comments down below. Spells with a range of self and instantaneous duration can be quite problematic in this regard. Not all of them, but some of them by rules as written, their range prohibits them from targeting anything else or anybody else but the creature who casts the spell. Their effects also occur momentarily, so that last sentence explaining range becomes somewhat contentious and rules lawyery. It's definitely murky. It reads, once a spell is cast, its effects aren't limited by its range unless the spell's description says otherwise. Logically this should apply to all spells no matter how long or short their duration is, but considering how D&D designers always and often claim that they prefer descriptions written in natural language, I'm honestly not sure what to think of it myself. Introducing locate animals or plants, which doesn't often get cast but it does fit the bill almost perfectly. Range indicates that the only possible target is the caster so if it's outside of anti-magic field the spells should work normally, right? Well, does the spell actually target the animals or plants you're trying to locate? Based on the description regardless of anti-magic field we could say yes but what if you're trying to locate plants or animals which are currently inside anti-magic field? Field. I think everyone will intuitively jump to a conclusion that you can't use magic to locate something that is inside of a pocket of space that prevents all magic from coming in and out. Yet, by rules as written, the opposite conclusion is completely valid as well. Time Stop is another self plus instantaneous spell which, if being cast outside of anti-magic field, while anti-magic field is active, creates a messy situation. Mechanically, it simply gives you a bunch of extra turns, that's the effect of the spell you use your action to 
action to cast it and as part of that action the spell effect gives you all these extra turns so you could ignore everything else and strictly follow rules as written again and well it isn't necessarily a wrong approach however doesn't it at least intuitively make some sense that time doesn't stop for creatures who are inside of anti-magic field you know something like that scene from justice league where superman is aware of flash trying to flank him but if you decide to follow your gut and apply common sense to it how do you actually resolve this interaction between these two spells i mean time stops effect is supposed to be resolved as part of the casting of the spell which takes an action to cast usually which typically you know occurs during the cast turns turns and well i mean that's pretty much it you can't just give 1d4 plus 1 extra turns to everybody else in the anti-magic field i mean it's not even their turn in the initiative order or heck maybe you can do it i mean let me know in the comments below what you would do and what you think now remember that list of questions regarding magical versus non-magical features and elements and effects here's a spell that throws a wrench inside of it conjure barrage yeah it's a spell and it's fueled by the use of the spell slot but its description specifically mentions non-magical weapons non-magical ammunition furthermore last sentence states the damage type is the same as the weapon and ammunition used as a component so since both weapons and ammunition are non-magical specifically stated by the spell is the damage of this spell also non-magical too because this is kind of like a specific beats general kind of situation is this the case like that or is this a simply flavor and natural language and the spell still deals magical damage obviously figuring out the answer to this question is relevant with regards to anti-magic field if at any point that situation occurs magic items aren't immune to conflicting interactions with anti-magic field too amulet of health's interaction with anti-magic field is something that i've had to deal with personally in my own campaign it increases the wearer's constitution to 19 most characters have lower constitution scores than 19 so this item increases their maximum hit points however once the wearer gets inside anti-magic field the constitution score temporarily reverts to whatever number it was before getting attuned to this item so their maximum hit points also gets reduced since the item's magic is suppressed temporarily inside of the anti-magic field right however no character's current hit points can exceed their maximum maximum hit points it's kind of obvious right there's even a rule for that if you wonder believe it or not chapter 9 damage and healing hit points but what happens when the wearer leaves anti-magic field the item's magic was only suppressed in the anti-magic field so it immediately comes back right that's how it works in other words the wearer's constitution score goes back to 19 its constitution modifier and maximum hit points go up as a result but then what happens to its current hit points which obviously had to be reduced as an byproduct of maximum hit points going down it didn't take any damage it simply entered and left anti-magic field so should we resolve this situation as the character effectively getting damage for like 20 30 40 hit points it gets even more complicated if the wearer took some damage before entering the anti-magic field so its current hit points weren't at the same level as maximum hit points can this actually knock you down to zero hit points temporarily is this how we resolve this i really can't wait to see the comments down below for this one i think you get the point i don't think it's like immediately obvious what happens here and here's another fun one wand of orcus is an artifact used by i mean well orcus only it doesn't state it's artifact anywhere in the actual stat block of the demon lord now most people already know what time it is when the demon prince of undeath appears right however the fact that there is even a remote possibility some dm some table somewhere out there would conclude that anti-magic field suppresses the dark item is a great oversight now this isn't really a conflict in the logic it's more of a conflict of lack of information but i mean it's possible for this to occur i will let your imagination figure out what happens to a gnome inside of a bag of holding or maybe a goblin inside of a bag of holding inside of an anti-magic field the magic gets suppressed of course and part of that magic is the following sentence breathing creatures inside a bag can survive up to a number of minutes equal to 10 divided by the number of creatures minimum one minute after which time they begin to suffocate so does this mean that the creatures immediately begin suffocating while inside of the anti-magic field while inside of the bag of holding you know let me know i want to see some discussion in the comments about this too as i've said in the beginning of this video these few examples are just the tip of the iceberg of possible complications and conflicts that the anti-magic field can produce when interacting with other game elements i'm sure at least some of you have had some similar experiences because i know some of you do play high level characters i do want you to post them in the comments down below maybe there's even more funny situations than the ones that i've just uh, described the 
script for this video is available for download on my Patreon page under the Fireball tier. It's not mandatory, it's 100% optional, especially since I basically just read it out loud for you in this video. But if you do find the Patreon perks worth the trouble, worth your time and worth your money, chuck a few bucks my way over there. Special shout out to all of my current patrons, thank you for your continued support. This month will be more active than usual, or at least than last couple months, so expect more content on this channel very very soon. With everything said and done, Minimax Munchkin out and uh, talk to you soon.